Waveform capnography offers real-time feedback on CPR quality, airway placement, ventilation, and return of spontaneous circulation. Here are five key takeaways for using capnography in cardiac arrest management. An end tidal CO2 requires ventilation, metabolism, and circulation. A sudden loss of end tidal CO2 indicates cardiac arrest. If a waveform disappears, check for a pulse immediately and start CPR if needed. If a pulse is present but the patient isn't breathing, begin ventilation. Compression feedback devices ensure proper depth and rate, while end tidal CO2 readings assess how well CPR is perfusing vital organs. An ETCO2 above 15 millimeters of mercury suggests good perfusion, while readings below 10 millimeters of mercury indicate ineffective circulation despite compressions. Overventilation reduces blood circulation during CPR. Capnography helps prevent hyperventilation by ensuring a controlled respiratory rate, about 10 breaths per minute, and proper tidal volume. It also confirms airway placement with a continuous waveform. ETCO2 can guide termination of CPR. If after 20 minutes of high-quality CPR, an ETCO2 remains below 10 millimeters of mercury, stopping resuscitation may be appropriate. However, a rising or high ETCO2, greater than 15 millimeters of mercury, suggests continued efforts may be beneficial. A sudden ETCO2 increase often signals return of spontaneous circulation before a pulse is felt. After ROSC, monitor ETCO2 to maintain levels between 35 to 40 millimeters of mercury. A gradual drop warns of possible rearrest, while a sudden loss may indicate airway displacement or another arrest. Waveform capnography is essential in cardiac arrest care offering crucial insights into circulation and ventilation. Initiate waveform capnography early and use the data to guide treatment decisions for better patient outcomes.